The questions I've been getting recently pertain to million dollar plus home sales in Prince Edward Island. Buying these million dollar homes and also how to sell them. I'm gonna cover the statistics and the story behind what it takes to sell a million dollar home and what has been selling over the past few years. But before I get to that, be sure to subscribe to the channel, press that little bell symbol beside it, and give the video a thumbs up below. So essentially, in this video, I'm gonna cover sales stats. So in the history of PEI, according to MLS data, which is all we have to go by, we've had a total of 34 million dollar plus sales. The first one happening in 2006. Of those million dollar plus sales, 23 of them have been waterfront and 11 have been non-waterfront. So basically two thirds have been waterfront, which typically sells for more with houses and land. I'm gonna break down the years and we're gonna look at the zones and see what zones are selling quicker than others. Additionally, we'll look at what's currently on the market and the story behind those houses. And finally, some takeaways. So we've had a total of 34 million dollar plus sales in the history of the PEI MLS. The first sale started in 2006. I'm gonna show you the whole list right up to 2021. Today is January 2, 2022, so we don't have any data from the current year. So as we see from the list, two sales in 06, one in 08, 11 we had one, and then it starts to pick up around 2016, and then finally in 2020, 2021, we've got 19 out of those 34 sales, so that's awesome stuff. When we break it down by zones, because their MLS is divided into seven distinct zones, we've got most of those transactions happening in Stratford, typically because there's newer homes there. When we look at the actives, we've got one up west, none in Summerside, and the rest are staggered, with East and Stratford being the top zones for a total of 26 listings. My takeaway from this data is anything above a million dollars is not a very liquid asset, and it could take months or years to sell. Of the active listings, many could be overpriced, they could be testing the market, or maybe they've overbuilt the house for the market. And what I mean by that is maybe they've got $2 million into the house, but the market just isn't there yet. In many cases, these multi-million dollar homes will sell for a small percentage of what they actually cost to build. It takes a lot of marketing dollars and patience to make a sale happen, and typically I find that vendors can be unrealistic thinking that just after a year they should have had 10 offers when the market data is indicating otherwise, and it's just been up to recently that things are starting to pick up. Due to a lack of sales data, an appraisal could be an issue if the purchaser is financing the property. The market is improving for these types of homes as we see from 2020 and 2021. 2022, my opinion is, is going to be a record year in this price range. This report does not include sales that have happened off of the MLS, which are typically few and far between. When selling a million dollar plus home, it's very important you hire an agent with the experience, the marketing plan, the marketing dollars, and the contacts to make this happen. The biggest question is, what do you ask for your house? In many cases, you'll start off with what you have into the house, regardless of what price you pick, because there is no data set to set that price. It's basically a Dutch auction or a reverse auction where you start high and you lower the price if you elect to do that or you wait it out until the market gets up to that point, if it ever does. Do not pick your agent on price. Pick your agent based on the marketing they're gonna put behind your property, the budget they're gonna put behind it, their sphere of influence, their contacts to get your property in front of other potential buyers. The sales data is the sales data. We all use the same data set. So look for that agent that's gonna get the word out there, not only to potential purchasers, but also to buyers' agents. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more of these and find out about listings before they hit MLS and learn about PEI real estate tips, tricks, and traps, be sure to subscribe to the channel, press the little bell symbol. And if you have any questions about PEI real estate or PEI in general, put them in the comments below. Thanks again. Have a great day.